whoa, 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 whoa. Just a second there, buddy. I want to come in and just thank you all for being so patient for this video. College is a bunch of other stress causes has been on me, and these things don't go away easy. I do have more free time now, so thank you for understanding. Animal Crossing as a series is pretty good. It's managed to make mundane tasks such as gardening, mowing your lawn, and cleaning interesting by adding cute little characters in. The big problem in the series is that the only real character in the animals had is in the first game. I never played it though. Well, I played New Horizons, and here is how it came to be. The game had a little bit of build-up, and I was actually very excited. I saw the trailers, and also what a surprise to find out that Animal Crossing now includes bird baths and gravestones. One of which is way more disturbing. I got Animal Crossing when the pandemic lockdowns were in its first phase, fairly similar to how other people got into the game. Only thing was that it took long enough for my delivery servers to deliver the game that I was eventually late on the first month inside of the game. <laughs> eventually, when I got the game, I was very busy with it. I felt pretty accomplished with 300 hours. Now for a very good show of what happens when you can't go anywhere. At the time, you could not even go out for work. Simply put, afternoons, mornings, and even some nights playing the game. So, and let's talk about what got me hooked. In New Horizons, you're put on top of a deserted island. You can transform completely. You can use custom designs for textures and even turn your island into a moon. Whoa. What? Yeah, you have a lot of creative freedom. Although I don't show it often, I'm actually an artist. I drew my profile picture. Yeah. The second thing is the museum and its catchables. They are common and slightly less common things, swimming and flying around. You can catch them. They change each month, put them into the museum for keepsake. I love the rare ones. The feeling of success is amazing when you manage to catch that damn thing. But let's be honest here. Animal Crossing is good, but no game is perfect. So, as no game is perfect, it's very rarely happens that a game perfects X genre like Doom did. Let's talk about my gripes with Animal Crossing. Let's start with the mechanics. The insects have a wide variety of ways to catch them. For some, you need fruit, garbage, or to shake trees. Fish, you fish here, you fish there, or dive. In all honesty, the dive mechanic is way more interesting with decorations with size, speed, even the bubbles can lead to what you are chasing. Why like, could you not make it so some fish come out with bait or something? How do you catch a crab with a rod? Should I not use a net? Could that be cool? You have to leave it out sometimes. You get rocks and garbage, but sometimes you get bottom feeders and crabs. That would be an interesting mechanic. There is no differentiation in it. Next in the catchin, I don't think there is enough. I am a trophy hunter. I want to catch everything. And now that I have, I have barely any reason to play again, even though I adore the game. You could put size records on things. The competitions are poorly thought through in my opinion. I feel that the f hamburger in mobile version did the catching tourney stuff better. I want to have a sense of fight in me, make a random size into the fish in a range, then put the record stuff in. Next, the variety. We need more stuff with gimmicks. 
I want a bat that hides in trees on Halloween and a coconut crabs that stay near dropped coconuts. And please, Lord, add more rare fish and bugs. Any things to trophy hunt? I don't know what it is about it, but I love the excitement of the hunt. The books are not too good either. They have an image and the times they come. No character or anything. Easy fix. Add notes if you decide to listen to the arachnophobic cow. You can get info from him. Put the information next to the main stuff. I have such a gripe with this system. I want this to change so bad. It's unbelievable. There is so much potential not grabbed. I don't expect Nintendo to listen either because Spiral Knights is still not on Switch. Let's talk about the little critters in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Well, uh, people say they are bland uh, compared to the older versions of the game. I have completely no say in this. I say I have no say in this, mainly because uh, the specific version they are comparing New Horizons to, I have not played. But I can read off their reasoning. Characters in the first game used to be sassy, rude and sometimes stubborn. Not just nice, lazy, jock or wannabe pop singer. This comes more clear the more little critters you host on your island. You know, because there's more characters, you will have a bigger chance to come up with the same personality. But, there are good things to the game too. Don't get me wrong, and here it is, the customization. Nintendo seems to have seen how many creative types gravitate to Animal Crossing and other Nintendo games. They give you as much free reign as possible. I'll explain. Custom flag, custom clothes, paintings, etc. You can change the earth and ground to take your island to another world. People have used these tools to make seriously crazy stuff while I made my country's flag. Someone made a Dimadang castle. I'm an artist.